Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. We're well, going back to the year 2013 to talk about what happened this day, May 14th. And on this day in history, the book Americana is published by renowned Nigerian a writer, Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. Um, this book won her the 2013 U.S. National Book Critics Circle Award for fiction. It was Adichie's third book after she had published, you know, others, including A Half of a Yellow Sun. Now, Americ Americana, you know, deals with lots of themes, you know, that, you know, basically crosses the intersection of, like, Nigeria, and other parts of the world we're talking about race nationalism colonialism as well africanness you know so the book critics praise the novel for talking about different aspects of society and how it reflects global global tensions and uh, it basically centers around two main characters ifemelu and obinzi and how you know they had ideals of what it what it was like to live and exist in the west and then they left nigeria for greener pastures for education in you know um from nigeria to um, the US and to the UK, and just what they encountered, how they, the experiences, you know, were somewhat different, how, you know, back here in Nigeria, they never had to, you know, struggle with what it meant to be black, but going over to those countries, how they had to, you know, really, you know, basically struggle with those concepts. You know, it was just talking about uh, the post-war in the in the U.S. as well for uh, Obinze and for Ifemelu. So the book was selected as one of the 10 best books in 2013 by the editors of the New York Times Book Review. And um, we know that in 2014, there was an announcement that David Oyelowo and Lupita Nyong'o will star in a film adaptation of the book. And for Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie as, as, as a writer, we, we know the quality of her writing and how she just has the ability to draw you into her world and make you really feel the words from the paper. She's, she's written fantastic books. I enjoy reading her, especially um, Half of a Yellow Sun. I haven't personally read uh, Americana, but I've watched lots of book reviews about this and read reviews about the book as well. But talking about my experience reading her work from other books that I've, I've read, I, I mean, the, the reviews are just there. Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie is one of the best things that have come out of Nigeria. We appreciate her for her work. And even though there's lots of controversy with her stance, you know, regarding feminism, but we do know that Chimamanda is, you know, one African author to be celebrated always. Absolutely. And um, we celebrate her. And uh, looking forward to I never got to read any. Shame on me. Never got to read any. I think I started the uh, Popo High Viscous. And I uh, only got like 10 pages in and, uh, you know, lost wow. focus. <laughs> I didn't lose interest, I just lost focus. Anyway, um, that's for that. And now let's also talk today in history. In 2013, on this day, uh, former President Goodluck Jonathan, in his bid to rid the country of uh, insurgency and terrorists, made, uh, uh, gave an order, of course, declaring a state of emergency in uh, uh, three states in Nigeria. He allowed soldiers, of course, at this time to arrest people at will and take over buildings suspected to house ex extremists in Adamawa, Berno, and Yobe states. An official in Kaduna uh, state at that time said gunmen armed with rifles and suspected to be House of Fulani Kato Herders killed 11 people in the village there. In Benue state, a government spokesman said an attack blamed also on Herders killed about 12 people. And of course, um, the president at that time was left with almost no other uh, option than to declare a state of emergency in these states. The order was issued and, of course, applied to Borno, Yobi, and Adamawa um, uh, states. He also ordered more troops to be sent to northeastern states. Militants from Boko Haram at that time were blamed for most of the violence, which had left about 2,000 people dead since the year 2010. Uh, he also noted the rise of insurgent violence in states, uh, other states, uh, including Nasarawa, where scores of police officers were killed. Um, he cited several recent examples of violence, including uh, a killing of innocent civilians and state officials, attacks on government buildings and facilities, and the destruction of Nigeria's flag for strange flags instead. Um, and so it was on this day in 2013 that a state of emergency was declared in those three states. Um, the level of success, of course, can be uh, discussed further. Uh, how successful were, you know, was that um, decision um, in reading the, you know, the, the country of uh, Boko Haram and, of course, of uh, uh, 
uh, of um, other insurgent um, well, um, uh, members in that time. But people would always also mention that, you know, at the end, you know, of uh, 2014 year or something, sometime around 2014, that the government, Nigerian government, and of course security agencies with uh, support from mercenaries and, you know, other, you know, um, 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 security support that they were able to get did a very, very good job with almost successfully defeating Boko Haram at that time. Um, it's a narrative that, of course, has been uh, passed around. Uh, some people agree, some people may not. Um, there's also uh, mercenaries who have said that their contract was cancelled right after the current, uh, well, that, that administration lost um, 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 uh, the election and the new administration came into power. And they had recorded a massive success in, in the fight against insurgency back then in 2014. But their contracts were cancelled. Um, but there have been, um, over time, numerous steps taken by uh, previous governments and the current administration um, to win the war against insurgency. Unfortunately, we still are dealing with uh, Boko Haram, with mm. ISWAP, and now with so-called bandits, with uh, herders and, and the likes. Kidnapping, of course, has also become one of the things that we've spoken about um, um, the most in the last uh, couple of years. Um, but, well, it's um, always, of course, uh, a constant move by the Nigerian government, by the Nigerian People's Security Agencies to ensure that Nigerians are safe across the country. Um, either with a state of emergency, which has also been uh, mentioned a few times in the, in the current administration as something that we may need to consider um, with regards to um, northern states in the, in the country. Mm. Yes, back then, you know, when the state of emergency, you know, was declared just so we can, you know, have a grip on the whole terrorism issue. And yes, you can argue that the Good Luck administration did, you know, try um, some steps, and um, it was one of the things that you know the current president, you know, rode on in his campaign was going to defeat corruption, tackle terrorism. But you know, they they, they came into power and begin to blame the you know past past administrations. I don't know why they keep doing that. Even governors, whatever challenges they say, um, rather than fix it, they begin to say, oh. The last administration left zero naira in the coffers. This was what we met. But you've been there for four, five, six years. Why hasn't it changed in your time? You know, so I just feel that there's a long way to go. And um, I really hope that the next administration that comes into power in 2023 doesn't say, oh, this was how we met it, but actually does something to make it better. Well, with the way things are going, there's going to be a lot of blame. Um, um, you know, for you know the current administration, the way things are going, you know, there's always going to be some space, you know, for someone to say, oh well, you know, in the last eight years with the with you know the uh, Buhari administration, these things weren't done well, that wasn't done properly, that was uh, left um, unattended to here and there. And so, well, like you said, we hope that you know whoever it is um, ignores some of all those things and just focuses on doing the job um, um, of uh, fixing Nigeria and fixing our country. All right. Stay with us. Uh, we have uh, our first major conversation coming up. Uh, we are going to be talking about the need for a national dialogue. Uh, do we as a country need to have these discussions again? We've had one a couple of years ago that was never really implemented and the resolutions from the national dialogue are still, you know, um, um, have been ignored by the current administration. So do we need to have another one? And is it also important to know if you know, um, we'll, we'll get into it uh, after this short break. Our guests will be joining us. Stay with us. <laughs> 